Welcome people, uh, this is a <coughs> set of exercises, uh, three in total, uh, which should help you make sure that you understood uh, the introduction to Supercollider. I'm referring to the introduction by Ellie Field Steel. you can find his video here on YouTube. Um, what I'll be doing in the course of uh, the next probably 10 days, maybe stretch it a bit, is I'm going to be posting one of Ellie's lectures, uh, which are great introductions to Supercollider, uh, setting some exercises to verify your understanding of what he has shown you. And then every second week, or sorry, every other day, I will uh, do a lecture on signal processing so this will become a course that uh, does both super collider and audio signal processing um, and should be fun yay cool uh, so uh, here we are super collider uh, first thing boot your server uh, library has not been compiled successfully horrible uh, if that happens you can try to recompile the library uh, I kind of still am with very old uh, shortcuts. It used to be Command L and K, I think. Here it is. Command Shift L it is. Let's see if I can recompile that. There is a discrepancy. Unit test. Test extra windows. Hell. Hell on earth. Uh, okay. Uh, let's try to run that again. Hopefully that helps. Here we are compiling. Okay, it looks fine this time around. Uh, great. They say in music you have a shit rehearsal and after that comes a great gig. Uh, cool, so uh, boot my server. Here we go. That's looking good. And my first task here will be to synthesize a square, a sine, a triangle and a sawtooth and verify the harmonics present. Uh, cool, so the quickest way to synthesize or to use an oscillator is to put it in a function. Maybe make this larger. Uh, and then uh, sine oscillator is sine osc dot ar, running at audio rate. You could run it at control rate, but now we're listening to this thing. And actually our computers recently are fairly uh, efficient fast so control rate doesn't do much it could save CPU if you have huge things going so I have a sin os sine oscillator and then uh, open brackets to specify the parameters and there you see the available parameters let's listen to a 200 Hertz sine wave and we'll leave the others as default that's my function, and I can actually play this already. There it is. Uh, so, what I can do is um, obviously look at the spectrum of this with Freck scope instead of play. And there it is. And what you see is that the resolution isn't great. And towards the end of this course, I will take some time to talk about spectral analyses and what why this is so. Uh, if you want to see a better picture, you can pick a higher frequency. Oh god. Um, it's probably too loud on my side. I hope it doesn't bust your ears. Um, here it is. Slightly more precise like that. Uh, cool. Uh, so that's a sine wave. Uh, now what I can do as well is I can um, call this a function. Um, I can call it a sine. I'll put it in a variable like that. And then I can say something like sine.play does the same thing. Um, and it might be useful to get friendly with these functions. We'll see how this pans out once we uh, create parameter settings kind of presets. 
Uh, okay, so that's fairly straightforward. Let's keep this nice and short. Really, we'll get into variables later. So to look at the uh, harmonics, we need a spectral display. And what we find out is that there are no harmonics. So what we have is a fundamental frequency. And that's about it. Uh, okay, so next one up is, I'll just duplicate this. Uh, let's do a square wave, which will be our rect. Uh, I thought so. Rect, 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 square, uh, pulse, sorry. Pulse.ar, here we go. Uh, and that's that. Uh, one thing that you can do as well to verify that you're looking at the right thing uh, is plot. Okay, so if I plot that, you see that's a sine wave. Uh, and then I can do something similar to my pulse wave, of which a square wave is a special case. Now, what you see here is that it's not a perfect geometrical square wave. Uh, and if I lower the frequency, uh, you see that even more. This is a band limited square wave. If you want an actual geometrical square wave, what you need to be looking at is the LF pulse. Okay, so that's geometrically accurate. Now we'll get into this uh, with the next video today in terms of band limited oscillators and geometrically accurate oscillators. Uh, but what we can do is we can look at the difference already now that we are looking at harmonics. Uh, so um, what we had then is uh, square wave which is band limited which was the pulse the harmonics looks like this uh, so what I see here is essentially only odd harmonics right if this is 2k this is 6k so that's three times and then this is five times this is 10k here and so on uh, now, if I look at the geometrically accurate square wave, uh, let's uh, do us a favor and have the same frequency there. What you get is, well, some DC offset there because it's not centered around zero. And I was expecting some aliasing, but I can't really see it here, which would mean some frequencies coming back here. Um, We'll get into aliasing and um, band limited frequencies shortly in the next video. So uh, for this one, I'll just leave the square wave, sine wave. There we go. Okay, and then uh, let's run through these now. Uh, we have a triangle wave. Uh, except the triangle doesn't exist. Uh, I'm sure the low LF try exists. You will excuse me being slightly... Uh, that's a low frequency triangle. Uh, let's see. Uh, so let's find out if there is a triangle where we get to browsing the, the uh, uh, help folders. Let's just look for triangle. Would that uh, yield anything meaningful? Hello. Does it need to be online, this thing? In any case, we can go into generators, deterministic. Here we go. And then maybe we'll find it here. Blip. These are all the oscillators. Formant, impulse, clang, uh, LF cube, Gaussian. Those are the low frequency oscillators, non band limited, phase modulation, syn grain, pulse, source, sine, 
V bar, so V bar, so there is no triangle, there we go. Uh, so I guess we're gonna have to stick with the low frequency triangle, there it is. Uh, because, as you will learn in the next video, with the triangle wave you can also create a band limited one. Uh, so just verify that. Uh, looks like this. So what you have there is again only odd harmonics. Uh, and if we plot that, it should look like a neat little triangle. Okay. Uh, and then the sawtooth wave. Uh, we have a saw. This is a band limited sawtooth. So if we look at the spectrum here, what you will see, it has also even harmonics in there as well. Sawtooth wave. Here we go. Plot that. Let's look at it. There it is. Um, you see, it's kind of half amplitude minus half to plus half there you go uh, cool so that's the first one just getting friendly with uh, using oscillators setting parameters and that should be about it okay next one up is uh, an exercise where we synthesize uh, white noise with the three second fade out so uh, we have white noise audio rate and uh, I'll first do this with variables okay so we'll call this a W and then uh, if we want to fade that out we need to multiply it with a signal that goes from 1 to 0 because when you multiply a signal with 1 it is full on, full amplitude if you multiply a signal with zero, all the samples of that signals are multiplied with zero, so they all become zero, so it's like muting a signal. And for this we can use the line, KR, control rate, it's a slow generator, we can start at one and at zero, and we do this in three seconds, and that should be our fade out signal. Let's verify that. Excellent. Um, I won't go into uh, curvature here. We'll probably have uh, time and space to do that. Don't want to make this one too long. Just basic few things to show you. So that's the white noise and then we want the pink noise and we want this one to fade in so it goes from 0 to 1. Okay, so let's check that. Neat. So what you get then as you hear is you didn't hear the white noise, you heard only the pink noise. So typically what you get to hear in Super Collider is the last uh, line of your code. Um, so the exercise would be to hear them both uh, through the same speaker. So what I can do is I can reuse the variable here. So W is white noise, but then next up W is white noise times the amplitude ramp. And the reason why this will work is that when uh, the interpreter deals with assignment, so equal sign in programming is assignment, I assign what is to the right of the equal sign to what is to the left. Uh, then what happens is that the first thing that gets done is you get the result of the right hand side and then you assign it to the left hand side variable. That's why this will work because first of all I'm getting the result of this at this stage W is still the white noise and then I say this now becomes the W. Okay. 
So in, in programming, this equal sign is actually assignment rather than uh, uh, equation, in the way we would use equal sign in mathematics. OK, so I can do this to pink noise as well. Uh, so now I should have two variables. And then if I add them together as the last stage of my uh, it's the last line in my code, I should get these two signals. Come one after the other. Uh, so that was simultaneous fade in and fade out. What you hear is that the pink noise is softer. It seems. Uh, so you see we have these tools now. What we could do is just see what's going on here. Let's uh, see how the pink noise plots. What are the max and min values? And you see indeed it doesn't go to plus one, minus one. Whereas white noise is likely to do just that. Uh, it has to do with how pink noise is synthesized. Synthesizing a pink noise is a is a fairly complex uh, uh, task, and there's different solutions. I uh, won't go into this right now. Uh, okay, so that would be both of these through one speaker, and if you want them in separate speakers, you need to create an array uh, with squared brackets. You have two elements in the array. Left element will go to the left speaker, right element, or the second element will go to the right speaker, this one to the left. And uh, that's it. The video is in mono, so I won't play this back. Uh, you'll assume that that just works. OK, and then the final thing is a bit of a creative task, uh, which is to pick four chaotic oscillators first. So to do this, uh, we will browse all the eugens and with eugens we will browse all the generators and within that we will browse the chaotic generators. So, uh, so these are the available ones. Um, okay, I'll just pick a few. Uh, the nice thing is that you can uh, normally play these things uh, from the help file. Uh, let's see how this one sounds like. Okay, I'll use that. So the task here is to uh, pick an oscillator, I've picked one, and set up five parameter presets uh, for these. So, uh, well, first of all, let's see what the parameters here are. So, I'll see that the first parameter, actually the only one that is being uh, controlled here, is set up to be the mouse x-axis, uh, which will be mapped between 20 and the sample rate. Okay, so... Uh, this is actually, let's just see what the name is. So this is the frequency of the, essentially of the oscillator being uh, run, being triggered, being queried for next values. So let's try a lower frequency than that. Let's see what happens with 5,000. Okay. Uh, Cool, so uh, what I'll do then is I will create a list of arguments. I'll call this the sample frequency, and let's do a 5000. So now if I, if I replace this with sample frequency, I don't have to make it much softer, uh, because uh, all right. that's one sound. Um, and then the next two parameters are x i and y i uh, sounds like x initial and y initial uh, this looks like a, a two-dimensional chaotic map in which case you can set up the initial values of both uh, typically with chaotic maps the initial values don't do much 
uh, but let's see I mean we can potentially break it totally um, let it what they say what they call is it's called uh, escape to infinity um, let's try 0 0.2 and 1.1 uh, okay it does make some difference okay that sounds more chaotic that sounds less chaotic so maybe I can find a, a kind of a point where it starts doing it from one still quite static okay so the question is whether okay so there is there is a crucial difference there uh, now this let, let's see about this parameter so 0 0.2 actually let's try a negative one okay negative works as well um, okay that didn't no chaos there okay um, cool uh, so the question remaining is that if I change these two values on, uh, as they play, uh, my, my, my suspicion is that they won't uh, change the sound because these are the initial values, although it might be that it suddenly injects them. So uh, one way of finding out. This is my sound. And then if I want to change these parameters as the synth plays, what I will have to do is I will have to assign this to a variable, which will be called gingerbread. Okay, so that's a synth. And then I can stop it if I'm getting really annoyed. Um, and I can also, um, set the parameters okay so uh, let's try with the frequency we definitely want to hear that go down to 100 that should work okay and uh, let's see if uh, let's leave that one there and let's see if we change only the x i so change the sorry the x i to 0 0.2 i think that made it uh, fairly static see so that was my suspicion these two parameters change them on the fly and they won't do much um, okay so uh, instead of those let's do another parameter which will be our amplitude start with one and in that case what we will do oh actually I made a huge mistake sorry because I didn't have these using the variable so obviously it didn't change I still don't expect it to but let's see doesn't look like it because if I do x I let's just try that minus 0 0.2 uh, okay that did work I believe there was a setting where it uh, so if I'm running this and then change it to That doesn't do much. Uh, so indeed, uh, it won't do much. I do like the 2.2 better, to be honest. Uh, slightly more obviously uh, berserk. And then the other parameter I will use will be an amplitude. Start with one, uh, or actually start with zero. And then once we set it to another value, we can use that. So we multiply that with amplitude. Cool, so uh, here we are. This is amplitude 
0 0.8, this one amplitude 0 0.4. Uh, I will create a preset whereby the amplitude goes down to 0 as well. So the idea was to have five of these and then see if we can play with those. So it starts with zero. I have uh, whatever, a few frequencies, different amplitudes. So it started, but I don't hear it because the amplitude is zero. Uh, did it start? Hello, uh, I made a mistake. Yes, I made a mistake. I need this to be a symbol. So these needs to be symbols. Okay. Not hugely musical, but there you go. Uh, okay, and then uh, let's do four more chaotic oscillators. So this was the gingerbread man, and then uh, let's see, maybe a Hennon map. Uh, let's just see. I hope to find some which would have variables. You see, the, these actually have variables that can change as it plays. Uh, so let's uh, use this one. And actually, let, let's use one which already has uh, some interest there. Uh, so what we have here is the first parameter, which was, uh, I guess, the frequency, iteration frequency. Um, it is now fixed. And then we have the two equation variables changing with a low frequency noise essentially becoming random. Um, so uh, let's hear how this sounds. Great. Uh, so I'll do a similar thing here. I will call some uh, parameters. So uh, sampling frequency again, 7000 for now. And then what I have here is um, well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll you make it a frequency of a noise oscillator, which is currently one, and the frequency of b oscillator, which is currently one, and then have an amplitude, which I will start off at zero. Um, so the reason I'm doing this is because these are ranges that are verified to work uh, because these chaotic oscillators can blow up easily um, don't want to spend too much time with this right now so multiply that with amp and that should be fine uh, except uh, that this now has to be sampling frequency okay that should be fine now and then if I want to uh, set stuff, set parameter values. Let's uh, call this Hannon. Okay, and then I can say set. Well, first of all, let's see if it's playing amplitude to one. Great. Back to zero for now. And then I can create a set of uh, presets. I won't spend too much time trying to be musical here. Uh, let's do SF just randomly 400. Let's speed these up uh, F A. Let's make this 50. Let's make F B uh, 300. Okay, uh, and amplitude, let's hear it. Uh, okay, so let's make sure I have five presets. The last one just uh, shuts it down. 
random numbers, 40, well actually that's a bit too low. Uh, let's take this one up, take this one down. Okay, let's do uh, 6,000 here. Let's do that there, 5, 0 0.3, that's great fun. Okay, so uh, I won't go on with this uh, because it's a kind of an explorative thing for you to uh, look at these oscillators, have some fun. So the last thing I'll show you is how to record this. Uh, in order to do that, we do a server dot prepare for record. We execute that, then we do s dot record when we want to record, and we do s dot stop recording when we are finished. So I can start recording, uh, start this synth, have it play, lovely intro, start this synth as well, and then while well, this one is. how musical this is. This one is a bit loud compared to the other one. Uh, and it's a boring mono composition as well. Okay, that's my amazing recording. I do stop recording. And that's that. And now this recording has appeared in my home folder, I believe. Uh, and then uh, music and Super Collider recordings. There is one created just now. And that's my lovely composition. Okay, so uh, thanks for your attention, and uh, next up we'll start to do some serious signal processing introductions. Uh, I will upload this file as well for you, and see you soon.